This figure shows the projective and rejective split of a vector v in yellow with respect to a vector u in red. The projection of v onto u is shown in purple, and the rejection from u from v is in green. We'll use a standard trick of mathematics to find algebraic expressions for these vector components, multiplying by a special form of 1. In this case, our special form of 1 is u times its inverse. We switch our multiplication grouping, expanding the product of u and v in terms of its dot and wedge components. Finally, we distribute the u inverse. We call the dot product term the projection and the wedge product term the rejection. We can perform the same computation by multiplying v by 1 equals u u inverse on the right. We've managed to split v into two components two different ways. We must now demonstrate that these satisfy our expectations for projection and rejection. We claim that the projection of v onto u is the dot product of u and v all multiplied by u inverse, and the rejection of u from v is the wedge product of v with u multiplied by u inverse. For the multivector products in the rejection operator, order matters. The left order is found by expanding v equals v times u times u inverse. The right ordering was found by expanding v equals u inverse times u times v. To substantiate the claims that these are the rejection and projection, we need to show that the projection is parallel to u, which might not be obvious given that u inverse is an unfamiliar quantity. We need to show that the rejection is perpendicular to u, and we need to show that the rejection, a multivector expression in this case, is in fact a vector, it has no components that are parallel to u. To compute the vector inverse in geometric algebra, we take that vector and divide it by its square. This is easily verified by substitution. In the numerator, we have u squared. In the denominator, we have u squared. u squared divided by u squared is 1. In geometric algebra, it's always true that u squared is u dotted with u. In Euclidean spaces, that's also the length squared. So if we compute the vector inverse of u divided by u squared, which is u divided by the length of u squared, which is u hat divided by the length of u. So we see that the vector inverse is always proportional to the vector itself. There's a subtlety in non-Euclidean spaces, since vectors may not have positive squares. We can now show that the projection of v on u is in fact the component of v that lies in the direction of u hat. After expanding u inverse as u hat divided by the length of u, we can distribute the length inverse into the dot product, leaving v dotted with u hat all times u hat. We have found the conventional vector algebra expression for the projection operator. Let's now show that our projection expression and our rejection expression are in fact orthogonal. The product of two vectors u and v is the dot product, a scalar term, plus the wedge product, the bivector term. We can write this explicitly as u times v equals the scalar part of uv plus the bivector part of uv. Using this idea, we write the dot product of the rejection and the projection of v as the scalar selection of the product of the rejection and projection of v. We plug in our expressions, and we factor out our scalar terms. u inverse squared is also a scalar, so we can pull that out of the scalar selection. We're left with a scalar selection of the v wedged with u, which is a bivector. The scalar selection of the bivector is zero. This shows that the rejection and the projection are orthogonal. Now we'd like to show that our multivector expression for the rejection of u from v is a vector and is in fact the vector v minus the projection of v onto u. We expand our bivector vector product as a bivector vector dot product and a bivector vector wedge product. Change the order so that we wedge u with u inverse, but u inverse is proportional to u, so that wedge product is zero. We're left with just the dot product of we wedge u with u inverse. We can expand this using the distributive rule and we'll find that the rejection of u from v is v minus the projection of v onto u. We'll now show that the R3 rejection operator can be expressed as a triple cross product. To show this, first we enclose the rejection in a grade 1 selection operator. 
This changes nothing since any vector only has grade one components. Next, we expand u hat wedge v as i times u hat cross v. Because the R3 pseudoscalar commutes with all grades, u hat i equals i hat u. We use the fundamental identity to expand the vector product as a dot product and a cross product term. We split our grade selection operator into two pieces and then factor out the scalar terms. Our first grade selection filters out the vector components of a pseudoscalar, so it's zero. Our second selection is just the grade one components of a vector, so we can drop the enclosing grade selection. Finally, we tidy up slightly using the anti-commutative property of the cross product. Manually visualizing the triple cross product form of the rejection operator requires some uncomfortable right-hand contortions. Here's an animation of the cross products that contribute to this rejection computation. In this animation, the vector u is in red, v is in yellow, and the rejection is in green. First, we scale u down to unit length, finding u hat directed along u. The v cross u hat product is normal to the plane containing u hat and v, but also scaled by length of v times sine theta. A final cross product rotates that normal back into the plane of u hat and v, perpendicular to u. The action of the GA rejection operator can be visualized in two dimensions. We decompose the bivector u hat wedge v into a unit bivector factor, say i, and a scaling factor. The actions are, first we scale u to unit length, producing u hat. Next, multiply u hat with i from the right to rotate u hat towards v by 90 degrees. Finally, rescale the rotated u hat by the length of v times sine theta to produce the rejection. Here's the summary of the projection and rejection operators and increasing scales of generality. For the projection operator, the R3 and the Rn forms with u hats are identical. For non-Euclidean spaces, we must write the projection using pairs of u and u inverse. That's required in particular for relativistic spaces where vector dot products have been negative. For the rejection operator, we have a ladder of increasing generality. The triple cross product form works only in R3. The bivector product with u hats works in Rn for any n, including n equals 2. The general form of the rejection operator, again using pairs of u and u inverse, applies to all spaces, including non Euclidean relativistic spaces that are used in physics and electromagnetism. This video was produced using Manum, the Python software system developed for 3 Blue 1 Brown's most awesome channel. I'd like to thank Sanji Lakamo, who provided me with some key guidance when I was struggling with some elementary Manum concepts. Please check out his channel in his Zero to Geo series. This video is a departure from my usual ad hoc and casual chalkboard style videos. If you made it this far and would prefer more videos of this sort, please add a comment that includes more Manum, please, and like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you might be interested in my blog, peteryo.com, or my book, Geometric Algebra for Electrical Engineers. A free PDF copy of that book and detailed notes for a number of physics courses can be found on my blog.